Welcome to Modern Lifekeeping, where we discuss ways to heal yourself. I'm your host, Lori Christine. The most important relationship you'll ever have is with your own self. You are your first true love. How are you showing up for yourself? How we show up for ourselves is a direct reflection of how much we love ourselves. Do we show up for ourselves as much as we show up for the other people in our lives? Do we show up as our best self? Do we know who our best self even is? Part of loving ourselves is getting to know ourselves on the deepest level. How can we expect others to know us when we don't know ourselves? So self-love comes from within. It's about filling our own cup before we try to fill the cup of others. It's about bracing ourselves, the light side of us, the dark side of us, all the parts of us. That's what self-love is about. It's about embracing who we are most meant to be. What does self-love feel like? feels like balance, inner peace, joy, forgiveness, authenticity. It feels very empowering. It feels honoring. It feels like it's in alignment with who you're meant to be. It feels independent. That's what self-love feels like. Why wouldn't everybody want to feel self-love? You can know that you're aligned with your self-love when you have any of those feelings because those are a good indication that you are practicing self-love. When we practice self-love, we would practice it on our mind, our body, and our soul. And to do that, we would think loving thoughts. We would have loving intentions. Uh, We would take loving actions and all related to ourselves, right? We would have loving thoughts about ourselves. We wouldn't have critical self-talk. We would talk to ourselves as if we were speaking with one of our most cherished loved ones because we are the most cherished loved one that we have, right? We only have ourselves. At the end of the day, we're, we're the only ones showing up for ourselves consistently over time, right? We can count on ourselves the most. So it's important that we learn to rely on ourselves and to invest in ourselves. I think investing in ourselves is is key to this. So investing in managing your thoughts, making sure that your thoughts feel good, making sure that your thoughts are in the vibration that you want to be in, uh, making sure that your thoughts serve your highest good, making sure that your thoughts are, are loving towards yourself. So that's, that's how we can practice self-love using our mind. With our body, well, we have all sorts of self-care rituals that we can participate with, but we can also eat clean and healthy, nutritious food. We can move our body as much as we rest our body. So, you know, we can move the energy around in our body. We can listen to our body. We can uh, get quiet enough to be able to hear what our body is trying to tell us with the aches and the pains. We can embrace our body as the vessel it is for our soul to be here on earth at this time. We can love our body, all parts of our body. So that those are ways that we would practice self-love with our body, with our soul, We would practice self-love by following our heart and listening to our intuition and embracing the lessons of life. And we would also make sure that we had meaningful moments. All of those are ways that we can practice self-love. It's not selfish to put ourselves before that of others. And that doesn't mean that we wish harm on others. It just means that we care about ourselves first, not in a selfish way, not in a demeaning way. I mean more in terms of a loving way. So when maybe sometimes some of us have a habit of giving too much and we're giving to the point of exhaustion, that's that's the opposite of self-love. Okay. Others of us might worry a lot about others. Okay. That's also the opposite of self-love. Um, because if, again, fill your own cup, let other people be responsible for their own, their own lives and their own emotions and their own situations, um, have boundaries, right? Have boundaries where you end and where someone else begins that self-love, but you can't have those boundaries if you don't know who you are. So get in deep, get down to the dirty as to who you are, uh, learn how to love every part of you, know that every part of you is okay. It's you're perfect exactly the way you are. And practicing self-love is the antidote to a lot of the pain that we're suffering in our culture today. If more of us 
had self-love, had boundaries, we wouldn't be in abusive relationships or toxic relationships. We wouldn't be stuck in where should we turn because we'd be following our heart and following our own path and not worrying about what other people, you know, thought or how our actions were going to impact other people. Um, And again, I don't mean that we're doing damage to other people. I just mean, you know, the influence people have over us uh, with guilt tripping us about maybe moving, maybe we want to move away from our family and they don't want us to. Well, that's their baggage, not ours. And it's just about having a boundary of, again, following your heart. So there's so many ways that we can practice self-love. And I mean, there's from practical, the practical ways are eat healthy, eat good food, eat food from nature, from the earth, eat unprocessed whole food, uh, just clean food. Uh, there's, there's no other, you know, what you put in matters, right? What you, what you feed your system is important. So when you care about yourself, you care about what you eat because what you eat, you are what you eat right? And what you eat feeds your, your soul, your body and your mind. So it's, it's important to eat healthy. So that's, that's a, an important way to practice self-love. And the other one for many of us is, is exercise, the right balance of exercise, not sitting too long, watching Netflix or working or, uh, scrolling through Facebook, you know, balancing that out with time outside in nature, getting vitamin D, uh, going, going in, um, going out for walks, getting a little bit of exercise, riding a bike, doing anything that gets your energy moving. Because sometimes when we're stuck, it's just our energy is stuck. You know, we, we're not moving. It's just an indication that we're we're at kind of at a stalemate. So another way that we can practice self love is to just keep moving our body. And of course, once we do move it, not doing too much. I, you know, I find I can't I can't do too little or too much. There's a there's an appropriate balance of exercise that my body needs. And you need to find that for yourself. The most important skill for us all to become expert at is the skill of self-love. That's the basic skill that we need to be able to function in today's society. So focus on loving yourself, talk to yourself in a loving way, treat yourself like you would treat a small child or a small animal that you love and you care about. And And you'll find that you'll attract loving situations. People will treat you in a loving way and your your world will just feel a whole lot better. Thank you for listening to this episode of Modern Life Keeping with Lori Christine. If you'd like more information about the services or retreats that I offer, you can visit Kira, K-E-A-R-A, kisses.com. Until we meet again, keep wondering.